Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a really useful R function that comes from the tidyverse and it's called slice. So there's a number of different variations of the slice function and they're very very useful for being able to subset particular parts of your data frame. I'm going to show you a number of different examples. All the code here can be linked up on my website. So let's take a look. So we need to start with a library statement for the tidyverse. This should be pretty standard. It's going to be part of most R work that you do. If you don't have it installed, go to packages, hit install and install the tidyverse. And then we're going to start with this really simple data frame. And if we take a look at it, we can see that we've got several people and some of them we've got several measures of this particular metric. Uh, I've just called it metric. And so what we want to be able to do is take different subsets from this data frame. So the place where I would use slice most is with slice max and slice min. So with these, what they will do is they will let you group your data and then subset only the highest of a particular value or the lowest of a particular value. So if we take a look at an example here, we're going to group by person. And then we're going to slice max and slice max is going to mean that we only select the highest uh, metric value for each person. So we run that and we can see now we just have each person once and the line where they had the highest metric score. We can do the same with slice min if we want the lowest. So we run that. And you can see that again, we've got our three people and this time it's selected the row where they have the lowest metric score. So this is where I would use slice by far the most. It's got a couple of other useful things it can do though. So one is that it can take random samples from your data frame. And this lets you work with the tidyverse style. So there is built in sample function. You can use that as well. Uh, this can be nice because you can set up a few additional things. It's a little bit easier to set different uh, proportions or probabilities for different types of observations and things like that. Here we're just going to do a really simple one. We want to take a random sample of four rows. So we just go slice underscore sample and n equals four. So we run that and there is our four rows. And just to show that it's random, run it again and as we would hopefully expect, uh, different four rows this time. We can also use slice head uh, and slice tail if we want to take the first few rows or the last few rows. So we've got data slice head n equals two, that's gonna take the first two rows of data. There it is. We can also do this with a group by. If we do a group by, then it's going to do the first n uh, observations from each group. So if we run that with the group by there, uh, we can see that it has done the first two for each of our people. So I'm going to have a look now at the tidyverse page just to show you some of the other parameters you might like to use. Okay, so here we are on the tidyverse page. Always a nice place to come and check out because there's normally some pretty good examples. Uh, so we can see here we've got head and tail, sample, min and max. Certainly for me, min and max are the two that I use almost exclusively here. Uh, I could see uses for the other ones, particularly sample, depending on what kind of work you do though. And so we come down and we can see some various different things. So we could be interested, uh, the by uh, is the same as group by. I prefer to do the group by separately before my slicing. Uh, na.rm removing any of our missing values. Uh, so this is important. It gets a little bit confused if there's missing values in the data. So do we want to take out the missing values? And how do we deal with ties? And so the same with the max. You can come down, they give us a rundown of each of these. And then we get some good examples. So here it's quite nice to see further examples using each of the different functions. Um, but from my code, I think I've covered the main, the main bits and pieces. Hopefully that's enough to get you going. 
quite likely you came here because you were wanting to take some sort of filtering or subsetting. You weren't quite sure how to do it. And so hopefully this video has helped you with that. I'm going to be back soon with more videos on R, stats, research, AI, and random stuff.